Hi LEGO fans! I've been playing with LEGO pretty much all my life and I've been really fortunate to collect some amazing sets. But up to now, I've never owned a modular building. So today, I'm going to unbox, speed build and review set number 10260 Downtown Diner from LEGO Creator Expert. Modular buildings are so called because they're built on different levels that can be taken apart. They're also built on a square base plate so they're really easy to display together. Modular buildings were launched in 2007 and LEGO have been releasing a new one every year since then. So that makes this number 12 in the series of modular buildings. This set is based on a 1950s American diner and gave LEGO lots of opportunity to play with colour. And as you can tell by these elements around the atrium here, they've reintroduced the legendary teal. Downtown Diner has a part count of 2,480 pieces. That includes six minifigures. Those minifigures are a female bodybuilder, boxer, chef, waitress, manager, and a rock star. There's a lot more to this set than just the diner, so let's flip this box over and explore what's inside. As you can tell from the back of the box, this is a very detailed set, both inside and out. Lego are very kindly showing us how the downtown diner fits together with the other modulars that are still on sale. The other two sets shown here are Assembly Square and the Brick Bank, which I'll be covering in a later video. Downtown Diner is built on four levels. Level 1 is the diner. Level 2 is a gym complete with boxing ring. Level 3 is a recording studio. And level 4 is a rooftop terrace. Perfect for up and coming rock stars to perform an impromptu rooftop concert. The downtown diner contains booths and a jukebox. There's a kitchen serving traditional American fare. And if you want to, you can sit on a bar stool at the counter and enjoy a milkshake. The recording studio comes complete with everything a musician could need, including a vocals booth and a mixing desk. The gym comes equipped with a punch bag, a boxing ring for sparring, plus a weight bench and a water cooler. To cap it off, there's an opening skylight that leads out onto the roof terrace, and you can clip this set together with other modular buildings to build your own Lego town. This is a super awesome looking set and I can't wait to get this built. So let's open up the box and see what we've got inside. Here's everything that came inside the box. We've got about 20 bags of Lego numbered for building stages 1 through 5, a 199 page instruction manual, four 16 by 8 grey base plates, and a fantastic 32 by 32 sand base plate, which would usually set you back about 10 bucks in a Lego store. I'm going to go ahead and build Downtown Diner and roll it up for you, the people, into a three minute speed build.
And here's the completed build. Downtown Diner took six hours to put together and stands just over 13 inches tall. There are four levels starting at ground level with the diner, followed by the gym. Inside the third level we've got the recording studio, and then we have access to the roof. The outside of the model is meticulously detailed with this large sweeping glass window letting light into the diner. And it's impossible to miss the diner as you drive past with those large pink letters. The street facing upper floors are clad in tan tiles with not a stud on show. There's a huge glass window that extends all the way up the side of the building, and that's beautifully accented with pink and teal elements. As the downtown diner is a modular building and designed to attach to others. The side of the building is kept plain. You can see at the bottom the connection points where this attaches to other buildings and the thin grey lines you see along the side of the building delineate the floors in the modular building where you can take this thing apart. The back of the building is less detailed but still has plenty of character and even more of those teal bricks. The other side of the building is quite decorative and provides various staircases to get up to the upper levels. There are stairs to get from the street level up to the gym and a very intricate and difficult to build staircase that leads up from the second floor to the third floor where we have the recording studio. This staircase looks rather like a fire escape and I'm not sure if that would pass building code but hey this is the 1950s. So that was a brief overview of the outside of the building but most of the cool stuff is inside. We're going to start our tour inside the diner and work our way up the building but unless you're the size of a minifigure you can't just walk inside the door. So we're going to have to remove those upper levels. Here's how it works. We start by removing the roof level to expose the recording studio and then the recording studio level to expose the gym and finally the gym to expose the diner. With all those upper floors removed it's much easier to get some light inside the diner. There's a sidewalk at the front with various studs that you can position minifigures on, also a mailbox, sadly missing letters, and a parking meter for the convenience of our musician friend with his pink convertible. There's floral decoration in the shape of these new for 2018 flower stalks and heads, and outside the door we've got this elegant lamp post which is a common feature in these modular builds. Another great feature of these modular builds is that there are no stickers, so what you see here is a fantastic fantastic custom printed Jim's Diner door. Even before we step inside the diner there's some fantastic attention to detail. Just look at that decorative doorstep. This is where filming gets a little bit tricky. This set is definitely aimed at adult fans and as such there's no opening side here so we can only look down into the diner. If this was aimed at younger fans there would definitely be an opening side so we can get inside and play. But what we do get is a lot of detail. The chef is busy working away in the kitchen cooking up bacon and pancakes. There's a little preparation centre over in the corner and it wouldn't be a diner without an industrial sized coffee machine. But for those who don't need the caffeine hit of a cup of coffee there's also a soda fountain. If you're one of those people who prefers to sit at the lunch counter there are three bar stools and just inside the door we've got this fun gumball machine which just pops off like that and you can see there are different coloured gumballs inside. For people who prefer table service there's a friendly waitress on roller skates. Like any good diner ketchup and mustard are in plentiful supply and I'm not sure if that thing in the middle is a serviette plucker or a remote for selecting songs from the jukebox. I like to think it's the latter. Speaking of the jukebox here it is and it looks like the perfect 50s vintage Wurlitzer. Artwork on the walls comes courtesy of these 2x2 two two printed tiles. These have a star design with the 1x1 one one Lego brick in the middle and if you're watching closely you probably notice the other two on the back wall. What I really like about the diner is that funky black and white flooring. It looks great when viewed from the curved window on the outside. And so the minifigures don't move about we've got the occasional stud in the floor where we can pose them. Moving outside and into the alleyway we see the more menial parts of diner life. There's a door for the employees to get in and out, a brown bin with some unidentified yellow discs inside and the regular good old fashioned garbage can. I also found it quite interesting that the extractor fan is one single piece that's kind of sandwiched between the walls. And finally we've got those stairs that lead up to the gym which are illuminated by this utilitarian lamp. Before we join those energetic souls in the gym let's take a quick look at those minifigures from the diner. Here's the chef, now whether this guy is just a hired short order cook or the actual gym who owns the diner who can say but I really do like this minifigure. He's wearing these plain brown pants and then he's got his chef whites on over there with this nice red cravat. There is a little bit more detailing on the back there with that print and then he's got this great face, looks very happy in his work and I really like that chef's hat so that is our diner chef. Here's the waitress and in true 50s diner style she's wearing red roller skates. She's also wearing these plain blue pants and then this vest here. 
So she's got different colored arms, she's got exposed flesh there, and this kind of uh, vest or tank top, and another red cravat, just like the, uh, the chef. Um, yeah, similar printing on the back there, you can just see the red detail of the cravat, and she's got a really nice face with that uh, slightly over the top makeup for the 50s styling, and then a really nice 50s style haircut there with the ponytail. And that is our 1950s diner waitress. Here's the gym which is perfectly scaled to minifigure size. At the front you can see the continuation of the large glass window and some more of those magnificent teal pieces. We've also got some of the more practical elements of a building of this size with a drain pipe running down the side and of course the obligatory window AC unit. There's a door at the back which is accessed by those stairs leading up from the diner and you can see the impressive spiral staircase that leads up to the recording studio. Looking directly down, you can see the whole floor plan of the gym. This is dominated by a large boxing ring, but we also have a punch bag, weight bench, and some other stuff. The boxing ring was one of the more fiddly things to put together. The floor of the boxing ring was straightforward, but the ropes were more complicated, mostly due to the fact that these just clip to aerial pieces and there's no fixed position of where they should go. So you have to align them by hand. Sure, it was tricky, but I think the end result is quite Quite neat. On the wall there's a clock face for timing those boxing bouts. And in the corner in front of that window there's a set of dumbbells. Training is a really important part of boxing and to help our boxer stay sharp there's this punch bag in the corner. The boxer isn't the only person using the gym. We've also got our female weightlifter doing bench presses. And when a welcome break is needed there's a water cooler in the corner. Those windows are a really nice architectural feature. I really like the arches at the top. Those are actually slotted into place in the wall and held by the arches arches at the top. A more traditional construction method was used for the windows at the back and at the front and I really like the consistency of the arches across all of the windows on these upper levels. Even though this is only my first modular I'm already a big fan of how these things fit together. I really like the way this breaks into different floors and I'm impressed with the way these fit together they're really solid. Before we move on to the third floor let's take a quick look at the boxer and the female bodybuilder minifigs. Here's the awesome boxer minifigure who in my opinion bears an uncanny resemblance to Sirius Black from Harry Potter. He's also quite mysterious in the fact that he's got no nipples. Now if we look down there at the legs, we've got dual moulding here with the blue for the shorts and the yellow for the, uh, the skin tone. And then he's got these magnificent arms with boxing gloves attached. These are not detachable, those are actually moulded on. Uh, we have seen that before in collectible minifigures. And that chest printing is brilliant. Just look at that, especially with the belt there and the little Lego boxing gloves. That looks great. I don't think we've got any printing on the back there. No, but we do have this marvelous hairpiece. I really like that. And it complements that mustache perfectly. We don't have an expression on the back there, but do we really need one? He's just awesome. And that is our boxer. This minifigure is listed as a bodybuilder, but I think she may also double up as a sparring partner. And I'll show you why in a moment. She's wearing these plain lime green pants and a similar coloured vest style top. Again, you can see the arms poking through. Some really nice detail there for the metallics on the hoodie cords. And if we turn her over, you can see the hoodie on the back of the uh, top that she's wearing here. Um, now, I don't like that expression very much. It kind of looks a little bit vacant, um, almost a little bit like a bimbo. I don't know why they would want to portray her like that. But if we actually take the hair piece off here, and turn her over, you can see she's actually sweating here, which is awesome printed detail. And there's a little bruise or um, some kind of scrape on the side of her face there. So I wonder whether she's been sparring with the boxer and uh, yeah, maybe he does hit girls, who knows? Um, but really nice hair piece here. I really like the, uh, the blonde with the ponytail and that is our female bodybuilder. So here's the third floor of the modular building which houses the recording studio. Architecturally it's very similar to the gym, but we do get this cute little extra in the form of a balcony which is decorated with flowers and shrubs. And of course we have the top of that very large feature window complete with pink and teal accents. Here's an overview of the floor plan and one disadvantage of having the balcony is that it encroaches on the internal floor space. We also have a small and rather claustrophobic vocals booth which is great for acoustics and not so great for pointing a 4K video camera into. 
Removing the impressive pink and teal frontage does give us an opportunity to take a look inside. Here you can see our rock star performing for the microphone, and it doesn't look like the recording star is bothered in the slightest by the slightly cramped booth. He's really belting out those notes. I really like the way they've recreated the acoustic foam inside the vocals booth using these Technic rack elements. On the other side of the window is the mixing desk and the recording equipment. The printed parts are pretty much stock elements, but I really like that tape recording machine. It uses the same round elements that we used for the microphone in the vocals booth and that you often see used on LEGO race cars for steering wheels. Behind the mixing desk there's some wall art in the shape of this awesome printed rock and roll tile. And there's a drink station complete with two glasses and a bottle. I'm sure that's full of water because rock and roll stars don't drink. Over in the corner we've got the manager's office which looks a little bit cramped but I do like that big red chair. The floors are also nicely decorated with these blue area rugs. It's difficult to say whether this was earned by the rock star in the vocals booth but clearly somebody has had some success with this gold disc on the wall. Outside we see the same style of windows that we saw down in the boxing gym, but no AC unit this time. We also have some window boxes with these attractive cornflower blue flowers, and an extension of the drain pipe which connects up to the one below in the gym. Another nice feature that the balcony makes way for are these two round windows which let light into the vocals booth. These are round transparent elements neatly sandwiched between two arches, one mounted upside down and the other the right way up. And finally for this level we have the door which gives access to the recording studio and a ladder which provides access to the roof. Let's take a real quick look at the rock star and the manager and then we'll head to the roof level. This guy's a 1950s rock star and he's looking very dapper. He's got these dark blue plain pants on here but then a really nice printed torso. As you can see on the jacket there that's got some metallic sparkle and if we turn him over we've got the same detailing on the back there that's just awesome printing. Um, he's also got this nice Kind of lilac shirt under there with some detailing on the lapels and the pockets and then a very confident expression but here if we take his hair off and turn him over we've also got another fantastic expression on the back which you don't really see very often on minifigures he's got his eyes closed and he's crooning away to the music that is fantastic and there we go if we put the hair back on he's got this kind of 1950s almost teddy boy style hairstyle uh, loads of gel in there or mousse or something holding it up and that's awesome that is our trouble making 1950s rock star here's a lady whose job it is to keep our rock star in check this is his manager and she's wearing these great purple pants on here no printing on there i don't think there's any printing on any of the uh, lower limbs on any of these minifigures uh, but magnificent printing there on the torso she's wearing this kind of pinched jacket and then another lilac shirt there with this really nice purple cravat detailing let's just take a look at the back printing yeah just a little bit of contour there for the body and I think a little bit of lilac showing through there for the shirt uh, great expression here she looks very serious and businesslike uh, but also a little bit wrinkled around the eyes uh, she's got a mole there on her chin uh, I wonder if these wrinkles have been caused by the 50s rock star causing her too many problems I uh, really like that hairstyle, kind of red there with these uh, waves at the end. And then if we turn her over, more evidence that the rock star is causing problems with this very stern, scowling expression. She's magnificent. I really like this minifigure. And that is the Rockstar Manager. The roof level is a completely independent assembly. But in order to show you this, I'm going to put it on top of the recording studio. This flat but decorative roof tops off the downtown diner perfectly. I really like the elaborate decorative edging which was a little bit fiddly to put together but looks great. Even the drain pipe has a really neat finish to drain the water off the roof. And this white hump on the roof matches perfectly with this part of the decorative frontage. Another really nice feature is a decorative roof light and this is fully functional so that it can be closed. A small decorative wall encircles the roof area so that minifigures can go up there in relative safety. And with safety in mind there are even handrails at the top of the ladder. And last but not least there's a decorative antenna at the very top. Lego always seem to do this and it does add a couple of inches to the height. I don't know whether they do that for aesthetic reasons or to make it appear a little bit bigger on the box. But either way I'm nitpicking and this looks great. So that was the last floor of the downtown diner. But before we wrap up we need to take a look at that magnificent pink convertible car. Here's that magnificent 
magnificent pink car and it looks like our rock star has found himself a new friend, much to the disapproval of his manager. The car is a great addition to the set and has some great retro 50s styling. I really like that bumper with all the chrome detailing and those headlights. It's really nice to get a full size pair of working doors. And just take a look at those fins on the back, nothing screams 50s like fins on a car. Inside you'll find a steering wheel and either a gear shift or a handbrake. And I really like the use of tan bricks to complete the interior. This is such a cool build, it's the perfect scale for minifigures and it's the perfect complement to the downtown diner. So that was set number 10260, Downtown Diner from LEGO Creator Expert. This was my first modular building, but it definitely isn't going to be the last. In fact, I've already got set number 10251, Brick Bank, waiting to be built. I'm a busy guy, so it may take me a few weeks to complete the video, but in the meantime, I'll be releasing at least two new LEGO review videos every single week. These are very expensive sets, they're about $170, $180 each, but I am really impressed with the build quality and the level of attention to detail that goes into these builds. 16 plus is definitely an appropriate age range for these sets, so they're definitely aimed at adult fans of LEGO. But I'm really pleased with this set and it will take pride of place in my LEGO city. I really hope you enjoyed this unboxing, speed build and review video as much as I did making it for you. If you did enjoy it, please don't forget to hit the like button and if you've not already done so, subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. And feel free to share your thoughts about Downtown Diner in the comments section below. It's always great when you guys get involved in the conversation. As always, a massive thank you for checking out my content, stay safe and we'll see you on the next build video.